Alright guys, Hatch Crab back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant Rostermania. A big day with 100 Thieves getting a new head coach after Sean Gez steps down, but also Sintels confirming their sixth man of the team. Arguably the perfect sixth man. But also, what does this mean for Dapper, who apparently was offered a spot on their bench, but now no longer has that on the table? Very much into it, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one plenty to dive into firstly an interesting composition that is being trailed out here by Fnatic at that event that's going on currently in Egypt but uh, more to say on that I'm sure over the coming days few Rostermania discussions as always firstly from Boom confirming that they are going to do an all Indonesian roster not sure why if anything this is controversial they say that they kind of have players that aren't so comfortable playing with English speaking so they kind of want to make sure it's all one language speaking organization Indonesian but I'm pretty sure they're all going to is Indonesian anyway, so I'm not really sure why this is uh, causing controversy, if it even is, but I thought it was just an update to mention for you guys regardless. This also on, well, the Spanish organization, Giants, we know kind of what Heretics are doing, we know what KOI are doing to some degree, but yeah, Giants, apparently they're getting Hoodie and Pipson, so a lot of that former G2 team, they are spreading out massively to various different organizations, and seemingly Giants is going to be one of them for next season, so yeah, and we still don't know what G2 are doing, whether they are going to stick around, let's say, in North America in the tier 2 scene, try and get into tier 1 anyway, but yeah, so much drama with G2 over the past month and a bit or so. This also from DRX confirming their full roster going into next season, so of course Foxy9 we saw join as their substitutes, but yes, Stax, Zest, RB, Buzz, Mako making the run it back for these boys with the others involved as well, so yes, DRX confirming their team, honestly I think a lot of people are going to put these guys right to the top, they were very good indeed at the World Championship, and I think a lot of people will understandably put these guys straight up there really in the S tier along alongside the Fnatics and maybe the Cloud9s or the Sentinels of the world who really knows how that's going to go even a team like Liquid could be rather good as well but um, I mean yeah there's going to be some good teams next season there is no doubt about it but we don't have all the updates from around the world and let's talk about this from 100 Thieves massive surprise to me when this was announced last night update regarding our coaching staff this is uh, DDK and Sean Gares they were the general manager head coach respectively Sean Gares of course and while it wasn't necessarily so clear like how they were getting on or whether they were enjoying their respective roles like, I thought they did a phenomenal job, right? DDK and Sean Gares coming in really turned around 100 Thieves' kind of team and the way things were going and, um, yeah, stepped into an entirely new position. Built around a young team, a young core with huge amounts of potential and made it to the World Championship, did an incredible job. And now they're taking that project one step further with Crow coming in, more defined roles going forwards. So, honestly, I think that Sean Gares and DDK have done a phenomenal job with this lineup. And Sean Gares, seemingly as the coach, I thought was the perfect guy to help mold these players when they picked up Cryo, I thought, wow, that's a real, like, Sean Gares type of pickup, right? Because it's um, just in the spirit of the rest of the guys on the team and the way that Sean Gares had kind of seemingly helped build the culture over there. So I thought this was going to be a pretty long-standing relationship. But um, the video describes how Sean Gares, like, um, in terms of, you know, his wife and his family and his kids and stuff, all the effort and the grind that it takes to be a coach at that level is, um, is really taxing, right? And of course, you know, having to go to Sao Paulo and living in Los Angeles, like, this is a difficult thing for him and, um, and also just effectively just says the grind is a bit too much for what he is able to commit at the moment and, um, and wants to go down the more content creation route. This is something he considered before and um, crazy the turn of events really with Sean Gess and DDK since they were casters for Riot, got rejected effectively, joined 100 Thieves and now he's going to be you know content creator for 100 Thieves it seems. So good stuff from Sean. I'm happy that he's doing what he wants to do and what he enjoys doing and um, I guess he just thought that the coaching stuff was you know a bit too much for him right which is understandable the grind that it takes to be at that level is um, is probably underrated by the community in terms of how much time and effort the coaches put into preparation and everything along those lines. But that does mean, I think personally, this is a big loss for 100 Thieves, to be honest. And the players seem to agree as well. And of course, you know, 100 Thieves are sad about it. They say he's made the call to step down. It's not like they've got rid of him or anything. And um, even as Derek says, going to miss this handsome fellow. Thanks for everything, coach. So yeah, pretty sad stuff. What this does mean, though, they need a new head coach. That's going to be Mike's HD stepping into this role, the new head coach of the team. They're also going to, he was the assistant before, they're also going to bring in someone else, I believe they mentioned, that um, apparently the community will like and be happy with. So yeah, just one coach is not going to be enough to get the job done. You really need an assistant coach nowadays to do everything because not only if you're the head coach, you've got to man manage, you've also got to prepare for games, VOD review, everything that it takes, like, well, innovations and stuff in terms of strategies. Like one guy, it's, it's a lot to do that, especially if you're managing personalities as well. So it makes sense you need two. Mike's HD as worked 
up to this opportunity, so cool to see him get the spot. But uh, whether Mike's and his new coaching partner can do quite as good of a job as Sean Gares and Mike's did before remains to be seen. So it could be a downside, I think, going forward. It's a new challenge. I'm very excited, as he says, to work and improve on this offseason. But yeah, I think the 100 Thieves, at least, they have a great team that's formed their existing chemistry. But um, I think the Sean Gares was a big part of building it. So pretty sad to see. But speaking of Sentinels, let's talk about Marv, because confirmation ready from Dot Esports yesterday that indeed the break is going to happen. Marv does want to return to tier one at some point, but um, right now it doesn't make so much sense for him to do so. As we said yesterday, there should be a possibility for Marv to step back into tier one if he wants to at some point or another. You would think that given the caliber of player that he is, that if he does want to come back at some point, he probably should be able to walk into a tier one team, but it's not going to be easy depending on how well these tier one organizations do. And um, who knows, right? Maybe he turned down or kind of put on hold the Sentinels offer that he might have been able to take quite early on, which we believe was potentially there when they were considering other options. And then they decided, you know what, Pancada Sassy, we want to go the direction of the Brazilian guys. Now, speaking of Sentinels, though, we will not be filling a sixth man to our roster for the upcoming VCC 2023 season. So I saw this and I was like, okay, well, they have to fill the sixth man because that is, uh, you know, legally required by the rule set. They have to have a substitute. It is mandatory, as Bo says. So people were wondering, okay, what's going on here? Is it going to be like a content creator? So they're not really going to have a player that's meant to be there for the starting team. They're going to have a content guy that's probably just going to be there for the fun of it, like a shroud, or even some were saying, okay, sixth man, what about sixth woman, right? What about Mel from Cloud9 White? But I thought that was rather unlikely. Turns out what they really meant was they're going to have a sixth man with the secret weapon returning in six. So really cool stuff. I wonder, like, um, um, obviously this move was 90% chosen based on sick as a player and his potential and the fact that he wanted to come back and can play literally any role. Like, um, in terms of ideal substitutes, it doesn't get much better than sick. But I think probably 10% of their decision was because they could do this nice little treat, right? I mean, okay, probably only 1% of their decision, but I'm sure they thought, you know what, this is, um, you know, this is too perfect, right, to turn up the opportunity of, of having sick as your sixth man. But um, yeah, loads of traction on this, of course, on Twitter. The sixth man returns. Good to see sick is back in business as well, because I've talked about him a couple of times over the last few months. Is he, um, you know, he was going through some mental health troubles and stuff and stepped away from the team. Wasn't so sure how often he'd be at a stream, whether he was going to feel well enough to return. Seems like that is now the case. Great stuff. Sentinels have stuck by him, of course. And as he says, thanks to all the Sentinel staff for the help during the break. And uh, we were hoping he'd be able to come back for franchising. There was a question whether they would get him in, whether he was okay or not to actually go ahead and return to a team in some capacity. And yeah, the sub spot for Sentinels, pretty much perfect. He's back in business, right? And honestly, would you be surprised if at some point Sick makes the return to the starting team if things need to get changed around? Like, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And he can literally fill into any role pretty much if they require him to. So I think this is a, a perfect situation Sentinels are situated in right now. And having Sick there ready to go is pretty much the ideal situation. The other part of the puzzle here, though, is what happens with Dapper. Because uh, Dapper said when he was initially announced and the team confirmed, we're not going to move forward with you because he thought for a time, and this is where all the drama happened around Sentinels, that the likes of Zoms and Shazam and even Dapper were saying, well, you know, well, Dapper said himself he was on Sentinels. He was extended. It was all good to go. And then a couple of days later, they told him, actually, we're going to go down the Sassy Pancada Brazilian route and you're not here anymore. And um, yeah, sorry about that one. So, and, you know, even Shazam and Zoms have echoed similar things where they tell you one thing, but then they don't really, well, Sentinels maybe aren't so forthright and upfront in terms of what the situation is going to be with your contracts going forwards. Now, at the time that they released him and said, you know what, you're not going to be on our starting team. They offered him a role as a substitute, but have since given me the ability to look for new teams as unrestricted free agents. But now Sick is the sub. Now, they could have two subs in Sick and Dapper. That is possible. But I wonder, has Dapper's offer as a substitute been rejected by either himself or by Sentinels themselves? Maybe Sentinels didn't know that Sick was going to be available. And now that Sick is actually kind of feeling well enough to play again, they're like, well, you know what? Let's get Sick instead of Dapper. Maybe a more flexible player. Let's do it. And now Dapper's like, well, I'm going to second it, lads. I thought you had to be an offer as a sub. And now that offer's no longer there. The other possibility is that Dapper kind of turned that down himself or that maybe they could have two subs if Dapper decides to do that. But that was the question I was ready to you guys. If Dapper doesn't get a tier one offer on like, let's say an EG, which is pretty much the only option now in North America, then, you know, what do you do? Do you compete in tier two or do you stay on the substitute bench for Sentinels, which might be a better career move for content and stuff? Tough to say. It depends how much you want to compete, especially because I'm not seeing Dapper anywhere on these kind of spreadsheets that Flynn is putting together. This is the tier two one, what might 
might be happening right now. So apparently trials with TSM, with Nismo and Xander, BCJ, these guys, and uh, what's going on with these other organizations. Knights are making a return here. The Guard are going to have a team. So, you know, there's still some big organizations. Apparently Xset are looking to build a new roster as well. So that's one update, which has recently come through. And V1, this is, uh, well, they're going to build around some of their former guys as their team potentially, but still potentially a low chance, as you can see by the color here. But even on this spreadsheet on the left-hand side, Evil Geniuses, it's very small, but I'll read out what it says here. So apparently Jorgemo, Bustio, and Karma are going to be there, of course. And then Ethan is probably going to join. And then Superman is going to be the fourth man, or the fifth man, sorry. Like, that's not guaranteed, but may well be happening here. So if that's EG, then there's no Dapper joining there so where's Dapper gonna go he's not in tier one on this list he's not in tier two on this list so like if Sintel just rejected his offer and now he has no chances or is he gonna be there as the second sub I don't know but I just thought I'd put it out there because sick coming in leaves Dapper in a very precarious position and just to mention this real quickly on the harbor thing on Haven here because some people are saying you know what harbor not actually as good as we thought he might be and um, even as you can see here when he uses this wall there's a massive glitch here that you can abuse on Haven that definitely needs to get fixed relatively quickly indeed if you use it in certain positions but very much into it to your thoughts and all this in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time